It's a weird feeling to experience something that you know in a Western country, if this happened to you, it would be considered outright homophobia. But when you're traveling in a different country, in this case, it was China, you sort of accept it and laugh it off because you know that homosexuality isn't as accepted over there as it is here. And there was an experience I had when I was recently in China that I think demonstrates this or raises some questions around uh, this sort of issue. As most of you know, China is very well known for producing ripoffs of big brands like you know Nike and Chanel and Apple and Android and all that sort of stuff. And they call these fake markets. And I went along to one of these fake markets and was you know doing a bit of shopping, trying to find uh, a few certain things. And there was a lot of clothing that I wanted. And on this particular day, I was walking through and I saw a jacket that I really, really liked. And I'd, I'd have a friend who's got one and I, he got it from Vietnam, I believe. And when I saw it, I went, oh, that's it. That's the jacket. That's the jacket that I want. So I went in and, and was looking at it and the shopkeeper clearly saw that it, it, it had interested me. The friend who I was shopping with was like, that it would look really, really good on you. And I picked it up, loved the look of it, um, but it was a bit too big. And, you know, she said, oh, do you like this? Do you like this? And I went, yeah, um, you know, do, you have a, do you have a different size? And she asked me, what size were you after? This is all in very broken English. I'm, I'm not going to try to do an accent because it's going to come across as racist. Um, and I said, oh, either a small or a medium. And she then, she sort of looked at me and went, wait, who's this for? And I said, oh, it's for me. And she, she snatched it out of my hand. She goes, no, this is for ladies. And just turned around and put her back to me and started, you know, refolding it. And instantly I was kind of like, oh, what happened there? And then I sort of laughed it out, laughed it out and just sort of pushed this line out going, oh, but you know, that's okay, isn't it? And she just didn't speak to me. I mean, this whole market where people are constantly trying to sell you stuff, talking to you, and as soon as this happened, she just flat out refused to talk to me. I looked at my colleague and kind of went, okay, and we just sort of left and went, well, that was a bit of an odd experience. But like, it, it's hard to interpret this because you know, we're in a completely different country. You know, China's only been open to the Western world for a very short period of time, and it's still very much based on the gender division, male and female, and you've got certain roles in society, which I obviously don't really subscribe to because back in Australia, well, I own a pair of female chinos. I know friends that own female clothes that are just used in everyday life, and you wouldn't really know the difference unless you're looking for very specific things. But over there, even when we sat down to eat and I was with my female work colleague, they would give me the menus, one menu to me and the drinks list to me, not to her, because there was still that really, really, um, really uh, strong divide between male and female. And on reflection, it's like, well, if this happened in Australia, you would be dragged to hell and back. If a shopkeeper did that to you in Australia, oh my God, it would be all hell to break loose. Because I remember years ago, this used to happen to people um, where, I had friends who were told that they were in the female section. I said, yeah, I know. And it, there was a lot of shit going on around that. Um, but what, how do you, I guess what I'm asking is, how do you act in these sort of situations? When you go to another country, do you just accept the fact that it's, you know, homosexuality isn't that accepted as it is in, say, a Western society and go along with it? Or do you try and push your, your own values and your own standards and not give a shit about what people think Unless, you know, I guess, of course, if it's criminalized, but um, it's an odd situation. And I just greeted it with laughter. And these experiences, are, you, you have these experiences and you reflect on them. You take them on board to understand, one, or one, how lucky you are to live where you are. And two, it also makes you realize how different you are to a lot of people. Because there are still a lot of people in Australia that think that way. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this? How would you react in a situation like this? I think this little experience can open up a realm of discussion of how we experience and interact with other cultures when we travel or vice versa. If other cultures are in your own country, do you change the way that you act and approach people? As the story ends, I didn't get the jacket that I wanted. God damn it! 
But uh, I still had an amazing time in China, and I've actually started a blog now that you can uh, you can go and read all my travel experiences and other things. We're going to be writing other things, not just travel, if you're not as interested in that. But I encourage you to read it because I really enjoy writing, and it's one of a one of my great sort of pastimes is writing. And I hope that you enjoy it too. I'll put a link in the description below. It'd be great if I could speak, uh, and I'll put something on the screen as well that you can go and click to. Anyway, that's it for now, and let's continue this discussion down in the comments below.